So today I'm going to continue this journey of, of, of memorization of scripture and, you know, the, the rules of this little challenge and, and y'all hold me accountable are probably going to morph a little bit as we, as we keep going. But, you know, I want to be responsible again every two weeks for quoting everything I've learned up to that point. Uh, but until then, smaller entries where I'm learning, you know, smaller blurbs of scripture, I want to talk about them. I want to teach on them and I want you to get something of value and not just about me memorizing, right? I want to actually teach on it. And, um, and speak to you about what God's talking to me in this in this this moment of of committing Scripture to memory, and so um, you know that's what um, that's what I want to do. Um, that's what I want to do over the next few weeks. So um, I don't have anything in front of me. I want y'all to see it's like nothing there, right? I'm not cheating. Why in the world would you quote Bible verses and cheat? It would be very weird. Um, but. You know, I want to start uh, in, you know, I want to talk to you all about last uh, last time's verses. Again, not looking at anything. I'm just, just speaking to you from memory, um, which is kind of the whole point of all this. Um, so the first the first thing is in Romans, in Romans chapter 3, there's a really gloomy picture in Romans chapter 3, um, starting in verse 9 through 18, where it says, For we've already charged that all... Okay, both Jew and Greek are under sin. And then they keep, so that's everybody, right? I mean, that's what the, the speaker, you know, that's what Paul's trying to communicate. Everybody's under sin. They're under law, okay? And he says, as it is written, no one is righteous, no, not one. Okay, so no one has their own righteousness, no one, okay? And then he goes on to say, no one, uh, no one is righteous, okay? No, not one. No one understands. No one seeks for God. All have turned aside. Together they have become worthless. And then and then he says, nobody does good. No one does good, not even one. Not even one. And then he says, their throat is an open grave. Their, 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 their tongue they use to deceive. The venom of asps is on their lips. And and their, their mouth is full of of root. Their mouth is full of curses and bitterness, and their feet are swift to shed blood. And in their paths are ruin and misery. Uh, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. So that's one situation where people are under the law in the Old Testament. Okay, or people today that haven't yet received Christ Jesus. Same people. Okay. Because the law was never done away with. Jesus just fulfilled the law. Remember, he didn't come to abolish the old Mosaic law. So it still exists and you must be under, you are still under that law if you're not under Christ. And you're judged according to the law if you're not under uh, faith in Christ. Okay, do you understand? That's why God is just in punishing those not in Christ because they have violated the law by not obeying it completely and fully, right? So this is where the good news comes. And, and, and again, this is memorization, nothing here. Like I'm doing my best here. And Romans chapter 3, uh, twenty starting in 21 through 28, it says, but now. Okay, so we were talking about the old law, but now. Now, okay, the righteousness of God has been made manifest apart from the law. So there's a there's a way to receive righteousness apart from the old Mosaic law. Okay, so anybody that was righteous before, it was because they were following rules to a particular point and they were eating things and 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 not touching things and washing in a particular way. So, but now. Okay, but now the righteousness of God, by which we are saved and justified before Christ, by the way, the righteousness of God has been made manifest apart from the law. And then it says, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. It's like, to what? What does it bear witness to? The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. So now we know that Jesus came, and as a result of that, he didn't abolish the law. He fulfilled it perfectly, and he was unjustly killed by the Father in our place to pay our debt who deserve to die under the law because we're under the law. So now when he rose up and we go in him and put our faith in him and are joined with him, 
the righteousness that was made manifest apart from the law is now had by us. We receive the righteousness of God, the righteousness of Jesus living that perfect life. So we now have the righteousness of Christ imputed onto us those that are in him. Okay, do you see that? And then the next verse, it says, For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Okay, so we're all in the same spot. We were all under the law, and we're all the same. It says, For there is no distinction, for we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by grace as a gift And are justified by grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a perpetuation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he looked over past sins or he passed over former sins. This was to show his righteousness in the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who, what? Has faith in Jesus. Why? And it's like, it's like, then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded for we hold that, for we hold that one is justified, for we hold that one is justified by faith in Christ apart from the works of the law. Okay, that's all I've committed to memory thus far. But like, do you see the good news there? Do you see the good news in that? That is big time, my friend. Okay, you're not bound by the law anymore. So, so and, and let me, let me even, let me just something I grew up in, okay? What it said, what, what it's saying is that that faith in Christ is all that's needed to be justified or legally justified. It's, it's, it's talking about that moment of justification before an almighty God, and you're being made righteous enough. You know what it says? You have to be perfect in order to enter into heaven. This is how, by having faith in Christ, because you receive that perfect fulfillment of the law because of your faith in him. And so... You know, that's what God sees. That's how you gain entry, is your perfection, having the Holy Spirit, right? And so, you know, God can't, God can't dwell in, in what? God, God the Spirit can't dwell in brokenness. He's dwelling in someone who he sees as righteous because of their faith in Christ. Like, there it is. Like, I can't, I can't say it any more plainly than what Scripture just did.